This installation is picked up from the last uh, work of Rupa Goswami, which is in Posey called his swan song. When a song, no, when a swan sings, uh, the last time in his life, his song is the most beautiful. Uh, in poesy, a swan song of an author means it's his last big poem, his last major work, where he expresses really his mature realizations and insights uh, one more time and then he stops writing. The writing pen is put aside. Mm. So this is this work, Utkalika Valari, from where we took the theme, Divine Aspirations, for this festival and also the Sangha Mela and so on, has been with me the last uh, for a year or so. It's the last written composition of Rupa Goswami where he yearns to be accepted in the eternal Vindavan as a servant, uh, a direct servant who performs direct services to Shimati Radharani. And uh, there's a beautiful new translation out together with the purpose of Baladev Vitya Bhushana. And uh, when I'm at peace, that is when I'm not traveling or also in the clinic, I'm studying this work already for a whole year. And I find great spiritual uh, inspiration in this hope-giving uh, verses. So that swan, mm, which you see here, was carrying a verse in his beaks, a song. Tvalila madukulyala sasitaya krishnam buddhasyam ritai shri brindavana kalpavalli parita Sorabhya Vishparaya Madhu Yena Samastam Eva Prithunam Brahmanam Apyajitam Naschayam Bhuvilapta Pada Rajasam Parvanati Virudam Beautiful, no? You can see, and it is a prayer addressed to Shimati. Radharani. Mm. It is uh, uh, pronouncing how Shimati Radharani is like a creeper, you know, small vine like this, who is nourished by the by a black cloud, mm. uh, the Krishna cl cloud, the Syam. Uh, Sundara, the Ganasyam, and so on. And it's a prayer to her to please uh, g give the author the taste mm, in the, mm, well, the experience of the loving pastimes with, between Radha and Krishna. So that's, that's the prayer I will ask Go Krishna to put it back into the beak of the swan. The swan represents who? Rupa Goswami, yes, yes. A prayer for a swan, a glorifying swan. Very nice. It has, it has come. So, yeah. Um, I will give a lecture, a, a last lecture, but I'm starting to feel that you have heard a lot now and I will make my mm, lecture a little spontaneous, a little uh, mm, uh, something which I feel is necessary to, for you to hear. 
few weeks ago, I became aware of Srila Prabhupada's first written book. It's called <coughs> Message of Godhead. It's a very small little book. Uh, he was writing it when he was still in Vrindavan. Mm, and uh, I found in the book something which gave me tremendous hope. You know, in our spiritual, in, in Krishna consciousness, we hear about, we hear a lot about these transcendental ultimate truths, like we are not the body, we are souls and we are parts of God and so on. These are very, very high level spiritual understandings. Um, but sometimes we may not hear enough of how will we manage our daily life with the conditionings which we have, which the challenges which we have. I find this as your spiritual guide or as and also as a preacher you your questions which you asked me and the questions which i get from the public are not so much about the philosophy how we are souls and how there is a specific sadhana or spiritual practice that brings us close to krishna but the major part of the questions uh, which I get is how do we deal with things like mm, uh, material desires how do we deal in a situation where we are put together with people with whom we have difficulties we cannot relate very nicely with them mm, the major part of the questions which I get a majority are um, relating to our human nature, not to our spiritual nature. So um, I always uh, wanted to hear from Prabhupada a little bit about uh, this. And in this first book he wrote, where he wrote, he uh, said something that spoke directly to me and this concern of devotees to hear how how they can manage their, their human sides. And Prabhupada there says that it is uh, natural as we go through life that we feel happiness and distress. It is natural. He doesn't say transcend it or, or give it up or don't take it serious. He says it is natural that we feel happiness and distress because we have a body and a mind. And then he says it would be foolish for any one of us to claim that uh, we are free from the influences of the body and the mind. You no, know, the body and the mind um, influence us very much. Therefore, we will feel happiness and distress. Yes, it is natural. And he says, transcendental knowledge or spiritual knowledge does not mean that you should not or will not feel happiness and distress. What it means is that you will not be overwhelmed by it. You, in other words, will go through your life, you will feel what human beings feel, but uh, Krishna consciousness gives you the inner strength so that you are not totally overwhelmed by it and, and, and um, forget Krishna or moved or if you or that you are moved away from Krishna so so I've thought what a realistic picture of Krishna consciousness that type of Krishna consciousness I can also live I can yes I will be sometimes going through the human emotions which one feels here but and Krishna consciousness will help me to always feel a deeper spiritual truth 
very much alive in myself so that I will not be overwhelmed and be pushed away from the spiritual platform. And then in the next paragraph, Prabhupada says how it is possible to not be overwhelmed by the, the dualities of material life. Would you like to, to hear that? Yes. He said, uh, we should remember that we are moving back home, back to Godhead. And by remembering uh, that I have a goal, I have a something, I'm on the way to something, uh, which I, when I reach, will give me the perfection and fulfill the hankerings of my soul. Then you will be strong enough to go, uh, to, go to, to, to tolerate all this. And I was thinking, uh, when I heard this, about uh, my experience in my childhood. Maybe I told you I had a horse, his long name, or proper name was Maximilian, but his short name was Max, simply Max. Um, and uh, uh, Max was a proud horse, he was a good horse, he was... Um, he was my horse. I had, we had, we had a type of friendship, but I don't think Max really accepted me 100% because I was small, I was young, and I was foolish. So Max thought I, that he belongs to Iraq aristocracy and I was just a small sutra. So he was always, you know, I couldn't tell, tell him everything. He wouldn't do everything I wanted. Now I remember when we went for riding, Max was not cooperative. He did, why should I go left? Just because you little sutra tell me, <laughs> you know, and, and he, he had his own mind, his own uh, horse mind. And uh, Gallop. He he galloped, but only two hours after his meal, not directly after his meal. He wanted to digest it first. But yes, so I remember we had a very troubled friendship. I, I think he liked me also. I liked him, but he would not follow everything which I uh, requested him to do. But one thing I noticed. When we had done our riding through the forest and, and where, where we lived, <laughs> and I turned Max around so that he, we would go home to his barn where he lived and where I kept some fresh Cox Orange apples for him. He liked Cox Orange apples. Maybe you also like, I also like them very much. They're very sweet and Knackig. So whenever I turned him around, he became enthusiastic. He did everything. He jumped very far with me. She, he, he, what else? I think once, if I remember, I made him even swim over a, a part of the the sea, we lived by the sea. And Max did it because he knew I'm going home. I'm going and eat my Cox Orange apples soon. So this psychology of home going gives not only Max and uh, strength, it will give you strength also. When you know you are on your way back home, back to Godhead, you actually make make realistic progress in Krishna consciousness. Then you are able really to tolerate the happiness and distress of material existence. Mm, uh, this goal in other words, this goal which is very much there in the future for us to attain. Mm. By the way, when we have attained it, we can only see eternal presence. <laughs> Everything will be coming, all concepts of time will merge into eternal presence. You, you will not think that you were, were even away from Krishna when you are back with Krishna. 
you will only see the eternal presence of being with Krishna. But okay, so but from our perspective, those who are of us who are not yet there, if you just hold in your mind this image that um, whatever is happening to me, I will I'm continuing uh, to go back to Krishna. When I will reach, that's another story that I don't know. Krishna will know, but I will. I have my eyes set on this goal, and perhaps this is the main message of my of this little festival. Uh, keep your eyes on the goal, uh, while. Of course, walking through the present time and dealing with what is to be dealt with at the moment. But keep always a minimum of one eye uh, or keep your heart directed on your goal. This will be very, very good. See, Krishna consciousness is only possible if you think now of Krishna. If you now think now of what is the goal of your life to be with Krishna, you must practice here in this world to be with Krishna right now. Prabhupada gave us waste, like when we drink, we think the taste and the water that is Krishna. Um, when we look in the sky and see the sun, we see it's the eye of God which looks down on us. We have to, uh, in Krishna consciousness, remember uh, to be there in the eternal present moment. That present moment that is from our perspective happening in the future, but this is only our our illusionary concept that we uh, think of uh, the future. Uh, so for this, to keep your eye on the goal of, of Krishna, you must hear about Krishna. You must per hear a lot about Krishna. And Prabhupada spoke about this and I want to read this to you, now, how important it is. It is. He said, if in this life we practice devotion to God, then the next life I become an associate of God. That Shintamani praka, Prakara Satma Sad, sat, oh my God, I'm getting tired. That Shintamani Prakara Satma Shu, uh, the, the eternal spiritual. Uh, world, we are transferred to that planet. You see, these are simple things. The whole thing is in my hand. But unless you hear, you cannot abide or live in that consciousness. Just like our friend, Prabhupada gives now a practical example. Mr. Cohen, he has left for California. Prabhupada was speaking uh, this, uh, he was in New York. Now, so far as I am concerned, I have no idea of California. <laughs> now, Mr. Cohen has told me that when he has reached California, he will write um, to me a description of the place. Now, suppose when I read the description of California, I think of going there. So I prepare myself. Oh, I must go to California. <laughs> so it's just like that. I was describing that Shintamani Dam to you, what sort of trees are there. And you were very much pleased to hear. And then you thought, I must go there. So we have to hear. Unless we hear what sort of God he is, <laughs> what sort of God Krishna is, what sort of God's place mm, is, what is the mode of life there, we cannot be attracted. We cannot be attracted. So, while you live your life, uh, 
like uh, we saw in the movie from Switzerland, <laughs> how the devotees lived their life and what they did, and there was snowboarding here and working at the blacksmith here and doing yoga there and and so on. While you do this, uh, please spend enough time to hear about Krishna. In another lecture. Uh, this was what I read to you in 1966, and ten years later, Srila Prabhupada addressed this point one more time. It was, he, had, he was installing a deity of Kaliya Krishna in Fiji. Fiji is an island, as you know, and in the old times, the snake Kaliya lived on that island. So when Srila Prabhupada um, opened a temple there, a nice temple, one of his disciples had, had arranged and collected for this temple, he was thinking, what, uh, what is the deity who, that should be worshipped there? And he decided for an extraordinary deity, he installed a huge snake and dancing on top of the snake, who? Krishna. You know everything. Yes, Krishna was Kaliya Krishna, or Krishna Kaliya. First comes Krishna, then comes Kaliya. Kaliya became a devotee afterwards, so he can be worshipped as well. So Prabhupada gave a talk there, and at the end, or I don't really know, it, was it at the beginning of the lecture? I think it more the middle and the end. He said, it is compulsory. Compulsory in, uh, in English means it's a must. It is compulsory. You cannot avoid Krishna Kata. If you avoid, then you are putting yourself in a dangerous cycle of birth and death. Krishna Kata is not think fiction or whims. It is compulsory. It's imperative. Everyone should become Krishna consciousness. If he or she does not become, then they are risking their life. <laughs> risking the life. Wow. Mm. Mm, yes. Uh, reading about Krishna, hearing about Krishna, that is the job. Oh, this, this is the world. This is the real world of Krishna consciousness. This is the real offer of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Prabhupada. Uh, because this is my last uh, oops, sorry, chance to address all of you, I will say one more thing. Uh, maybe you also felt deep satisfaction. Some devotees told me, with whom I'm, with whom I'm speaking, Bharata Shreshta, Banu Nandini, uh, Go Krishna, Go Govind. Um, other devotees also talked to me. Um, Damoda Priya, I met Damoda Priya. Uh, outside. They all, uh, Syam Nam, uh, I asked a few and we, we all shared, we felt very blissful. We, and we fe felt also that this uh, is not a birthday ceremony only, although we will soon have more videos and more fun and we also had a wonderful birthday cake. Uh, did you also appreciate the cake? Uh, I thought it was like a breeze that was blowing over a rose field, so sweet and subtle in its taste, uh, very nice. Mm. And good first class marzipan was also there. <laughs> so, mm, so yeah, um, mm. we felt really, uh, yes, there were, were all these elements, but we felt some spiritual bliss which was given by, by Srila Prabhupada, by this whole Sampradaya, the whole lineage the, of, of disciplic succession. And uh, 
we felt this wonderful connection and I I always think why should this only be done in one day of a year or why should we only feel like this one day of a year we should keep our transcendental relationship uh, alive uh, it means from your side mm, or from my side uh, I should be more aware to nourish you to to take more care of you um, uh, and help you to serve Krishna and from your side yes you should also uh, feel yes let let me keep this relationship alive something should happen in this relationship I received uh, in the noon pause many messages from all over the world from devotees uh, and uh, I was very happy that they did something to keep our relationship alive even though we are uh, distanced by many kilometers and I immediately responded with voice messages to all of them or most of them. Uh, I still am to hear the message of Bui Jam Prabhu and uh, I have not yet uh, found time to hear but I will soon hear. Uh, so uh, Yes, let us see that this is maintained, this relationship, because it is life-giving and it makes the heart feel, feel more blissful. Also the relationship amongst yourself. Why don't you see if you can help God brothers or God sisters by just being there for them, assisting them, maybe contacting them, uh, phoning them, sending them... Um, raisins or dates or whatever something nice uh, a book a new book which and so on and just invest a little bit into transcendental relationships you must know uh, every many talk about covid nowadays maybe you have also heard about it mm, and uh, uh, the the real problems uh, are not the health problems they are also not so much the political problems they are also not so much the economic problems in my eyes the real problems is the people withdraw from each other and that they also take sides over the issue where they fight with each other uh, about their various insights which may differ from the insight of another one. In other words, the main problem happens not on the health uh, sphere but on the what is the, the, the words for it the noosphere no and the semiosphere it means that what, what goes on in the mind you know, of people uh, there the virus is the strongest uh, also uh, so if you want to, to some, some speak about vaccination others speak about no vaccination wherever you stand on this issue Krishna consciousness will will protect you from the, what happens in the mind in this time which will soon be forgotten uh, and in the time to come so I request you to nourish yourself and to nourish others don't forget bhakti is every is just right next to you it's right in your heart but you can only feel it when you help another person to uh, acquire bhakti huh? don't forget this very important message you can i krishna when you help your wife or friends in the temple to be more in bhakti when you say let's do a kirtan and you give your best Mm, then you will also feel bhakti or mm, uh, go Krishna when you take that book and go to the man in the toilet room in Brussels and give him the bo book um, then you feel bhakti rising in your heart bhakti can be felt if we share it with others but if we withdraw if we 
separate ourselves from devotees because of opinions maybe um, and so on uh, if we go away then we are really infected by maya and then we cannot feel bhakti at all good so i thank you very much for giving me your ear i think now we will have a very light rest of the festival light means not so much philosophy, not so much preaching, not so much stirring the heart. Just the heart will be stirred. That we will, that cannot be without. We cannot do without. I thank you very much. Uh, Hare Krishna. <laughs>